Hello and welcome to this episode of Rick's Garage. Today is part three in a multi-part series covering the engine bay restoration on my Alfa Romeo GTV 3 litre V6. See you in a minute. So yes, welcome back guys, welcome to Rick's Garage, I hope you've all had a fantastic Christmas and New Year, I know I have. So yeah, cracking on with today, as I say, this is part three in a multi-part series guys. If you have yet to see parts one and two, then I have created a playlist specifically for the GTV engine bay restoration. So yeah, you may want to see those first before continuing with this episode. But if you are up to speed guys, then yeah, let's continue. Now today, I do apologise that this episode has been a while coming, but there is a couple of reasons for that. First of all, as a few of you few of you may be aware, I do like to cover as much detail as possible in my videos. I don't like to skip bits. I do like to cover as many aspects as I possibly can. But at the same time, nobody wants to see loads of episodes just me painting the end the frame in my engine bay. So yeah, I decided to compress the last of it in one episode. I hope you'll appreciate that. So yeah, today we're going to get this little uh, project finished, um, i.e. the the frame painted today is going to be completed so i hope you enjoy the episode one quick thing that i want to mention guys now i am not a professional painter by any means i am pretty good with an aerosol but no i am not a professional therefore this is not an instructional video guys this is me sharing with you guys my process, sharing with you a couple of my tips, what I like to do personally. If it helps you guys out, then that is absolutely fantastic. Take from it what you will. Now, if there are a few professionals out there watching this thinking you shouldn't have done that, you should have done this, that is absolutely fine. No problem with that at all. If you guys want to add your comments down below, then please feel free to do so. All I ask is that, you know, please do keep it constructive, you know, just help people out help me out help other people out that would be absolutely fine but yeah this is me sharing with you guys my process take from it what you will um so yeah with that out of the way what we need to do first before we continue is there are a couple of little things that i still need to remove from the engine bay unbolt a few bits that, that i overlooked and forgotten about last time so yeah i'll just remove those first so yeah once that's out of the way we can pick up where we left off so as i say this is a slightly longer episode than normal but i hope you enjoy it all the same let's carry on
Okay guys and girls, so that is the long, tedious process of completely removing every nut and bolt and accessory from the framework of the car. So the process, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be doing next, and that is completely cleaning all of this framework off. I know that this is just mud and grime, and when all of this is removed, it's going to look a hell of a lot better, a lot better than what I'm expecting, but not only that, it's going to highlight the areas a lot more that need attention. The passenger side of this car was by far the worst side. I did have a few snapped brackets and a few snapped bolts on that side, but this side, seems to be you know the best side it's pretty much spotless obviously these posts need quite a bit of attention so once i've cleaned the front of the car off what i'm then going to do is the obvious thing go around with a wire wheel on the end of a drill and get rid of as much of this surface rust in all the little intricate areas as i possibly can but then what i'm going to do now please do bear in mind guys i'm going to talk more about each of the these products that i'm using as i go along what i'm then going to do is use this rust converter by dinatrol the RC900. Now guys this is expensive but believe me it is the best. I'm going to talk more about this when I come to use it. Once I've done that what I'm then going to do is use epoxy primer. Uh, epoxy primer is very very good. Then what I'm going to do is give everything that I possibly can a base coat which is my colour code Alpha 632. Now the beauty about this little uh, project is I don't need to be overly concerned about uh, achieving a perfect finish. It's the frame of the car, you're not necessarily going to see it and you may be thinking, well, why are you bothering? Well, because I know it's there and I know it's done and it's going to be treated and I'll stop the rust in its tracks. That's what it's all about. But that doesn't mean to say I can't achieve a fantastic finish here. I'm confident here. I'm pretty good with an aerosol. Obviously, I'm going to put a coat of lacquer down as well. Um, so yeah, that is the process. As I say, guys, I'm going to talk more about the products as I come to use them. So yeah, without further ado, as I say, what I'm going to do now, get this framework completely cleaned off as much as possible. I'll need to use as little water as possible. I think I'm just going to use a, a couple of damp rags and uh, make sure dry as well it's just about getting all this muck and crud off i don't need to get it spotless because when i start wire wheeling it's got it's all going to need another bit of a clean anyway um but yeah by cleaning it first as i say it's going to highlight the areas more that need the attention so no more waffle from me let's carry on So there you go guys and girls, that is the frame now completely cleaned off and I'm sure you'll agree with me in saying that it looks a hell of a lot better now. For a 20 year old Alfa Romeo that has been used, not being a garage queen all its life, this is pretty much 
as good as it gets. I'm really impressed with it, to be honest. Now, even inside all of the box sections, you know, just around this area, it's just so spotless inside. There's no areas for concern whatsoever. Once I've finished, I can spray lots of cavity wax inside here and just not worry about it in future years. Now, obviously, by removing every part of nut and bolt and then cleaning it, obviously, that helps reveal any areas that need to be addressed that I would not otherwise have seen before, such as on the front, there is an area here, which as you can see, is quite blistered. I'm going to catch that just in time. But yeah, again, that is the reason why I'm doing this. But overall, as I say, I'm sure you'll agree, this whole frame, it really is in good condition. I'm chuffed a bit with it, to be honest. This Alpha, the whole car, I've been really surprised how little to no rust there has been on it. It's, I bought a really, really good example. I think uh, for rust, Rust is probably one of the most important things when you're buying any alpha is to buy as much of a rust free example as you can. And you know, this was the first one I viewed and I bought it, but <laughs> I think I dropped on a good one. So yeah, anyway, the next stage, what we're going to do is completely remove all of this surface rust or any surface rust that I've got. And to do that, I'm going to use good old conventional methods, a wire brush, as you can see, some wire attachments on the end of my drill. But yeah, that will remove most of it. But for all the little tight spaces, what I'm going to need is something like this rotary tool with a flexi on the end to get in all the little tight spots. Normally I have little wire wheels that go on the end of this. I normally have some in the garage, but I've just realized that I've got none left. So I will need to order some. So I may not be able to use this today. But what I do have are some little um, sandpaper wheels, which I could use as well. Um, that would work fine. Uh, I would prefer the wire wheels though. But yeah, we're going to see how far we get to today using just a wire brush and the wire wheels. It should start to look a lot better. Now, obviously, guys, I'm not going to do the entire frame. I'm not wire wheeling the entire frame, just a bit where it's needed. For the rest of the frame, as I've mentioned before, what we're going to do is just rub it down with a scotch pad ready for paint. Overall, I'm going to make this entire frame look so, so much better and it will be rust proofed for years to come. So as the saying goes, guys, without further ado, let's crack on with that.
Okay guys, so that is the long, tedious task done of getting rid of all the rust on this frame. Now, obviously, everybody knows the longer you spend doing stuff like that, the better the results are going to be, and the longer all the rust is going to stay at bay. Most people, when it comes to doing it, let's be honest, nobody likes to do it. Most people, when they do it, they just get a wire wheel or a brush and just do it half ass, and, you know, that'll do. I think is with wire wheels, it just kind of brushes over the rust, if you know what I mean, and you really need to get into the metal and get that rust out as much as you can. That is what I've done. I've spent a lot of time on this off camera, but yeah, that's done out of the way. And we're moving on to the next stage, which is the Dinitrol RC900 rust converter. I promised I would talk to you guys a little bit about this product. I'll, I'll try not to drag it on for too long because I am, you know, concerned about the length of this video. But yeah, I promised I would talk about this a little bit. Now, this stuff retails between 30 and 35 pounds. So yes, it is expensive, but believe me, it lasts a long time. It goes extremely far. It almost sounds and feels like water in there. And it seems like you keep spraying it and spraying it and it seems to last forever so yeah it is expensive but you know believe me it goes very very far now i was actually lucky enough because i was given for free two bottles of this stuff a few years ago by a good friend of mine that i used to work with and um, he said i don't need it anymore well you know <laughs> i'm not complaining i mean if it was me i would just keep it in the cupboard of the garage for years to come but yeah i'm not complaining free so yeah the Dinatrol rc900 this is by far the best rust converter i have ever used i've tried the little ones that you can buy from main high street stores such as halfords yes they are good but you, you're talking little quantities with a little tiny brush and it's not ideal when you've got lots of areas to cover i've tried the liter bottles of the non-branded stuff you can buy on ebay i've had uh, good ones of that by the way in the past and i've had not so good ones uh, i'll try and put a photo up on the screen now of a crap one that i recently bought this stuff ebay absolutely garbage don't buy that one now the best one believe me i've used loads is this one yes it's expensive but you know with a lot of things in life you get what you pay for and with a job like this you want as you know you want to use the best products you can afford really if you can afford it buy some of this stuff you won't be disappointed now <laughs> I know what this stuff uh, does, but I'm not very good at putting things into words and I've got a memory like a fish when it comes to memorizing, memorizing information and relaying it back to you. So what I'm going to do is just read it from the website directly to you and um, to give you a better idea of what this is and what it does. I'll be as quick as I can. So it says the specialist rust converter contains a complex organic shellac base and epoxy resin. Dinatrol RC900 actively converts rust on the substrates into a stable organic iron complex. Once the product is dry, an impermeable barrier against further corrosion is formed. Permeable, that isn't really a word you hear very often, but it basically means uh, a barrier that doesn't let something through, i.e. moisture. So it continues, Dinatrol RC900 penetrates rust seven to 10 times deeper than standard rust converters. Now seven to 10 times deeper, you're never really going to accurately calculate that, but I can confirm that this in an odd way, it does penetrate a lot deeper than other rust converters that I've ever used before. It's very strange to, um, to, to, to try to try and explain I'll, I'll just try and show you uh, later in the video but it seems that when you clean metal off you can um wire wheel it do what you like to it and it looks like you've got all the rust out it looks like burr clean metal and you think there's yeah there's no rust left in there you spray this stuff on and it seems to draw spots out or areas completely black where there's rust underneath the metal it's really, really amazing how it does it. Um, that is the only rust converter that I, I have used where it does that. So yeah, I kind of believe what it's saying there. So it continues again. The product forms a strong, dry adhesive film that provides a suitable base for paintwork and other corrosion protection products. So yeah, i.e. you can put, safely put primer or what I'm going to use my epoxy primer over the top of this without any issues whatsoever. So it continues, Dinitrol RC900 is a highly technological advanced product with a complicated chemical formulation. The product only works at temperatures above 10 degrees and must be allowed to fully dry. Guidelines stipulate at, at standard atmospheric conditions, 15 degrees and a humidity of 60%. The average drying time is 24 hours. Sometimes multiple coats must be applied before corrosion is fully converted into a deep black color, providing indication that the area has been treated. When applying multiple coats, you must make sure 
um, that the earlier coating is completely dry. But yes, once again, I can confirm if you are doing a job and you're trying to do the job in a day, you need to be careful using this stuff because it does take at least 24 hours to fully dry. Um, you may be lucky and uh, be quicker than that, but yeah, 24 hours. Um, and I've used this in my garage before and it's taken 24 hours with the heat on in the garage. Obviously this time of year it's winter, it may take a little bit longer if you haven't got heat in your garage or you're using it outside. So just bear that in mind, it can take quite a while to dry. Okay guys, so the rust converter, 24 hours is completely dry, job done, it's looking fantastic. Straight on to the next stage, epoxy primer. Now usually with a dark colour, especially with black or alpha 632 which is my paint code, the recommended primer colour to use would be black but for this particular job it doesn't really matter, you're not really going to notice any difference. This particular colour that I'm using in this epoxy primer is light grey. You won't really tell any difference at all whatsoever. The epoxy primer does have a very fast dry time, it is very user friendly but that said you don't want to go in there too heavy for the first coat, give it a bit of a dust coat then literally a few minutes later you can go back there again and give it a heavier coat. So the morning after when the epoxy primer is completely dry I then go over the entire thing with a red scotch pad followed by some panel degreaser or panel wipe. I just use that with some blue roll. Don't try and do the entire thing using one little piece of blue roll. Keep renewing it, keep it fresh, keep it clean. Now if like me you have the luxury of being able to spray inside your garage or undercover, what I normally do is put the heater on in my garage for a good hour before spraying. If you can try and raise the temperature, especially in the winter, that will help you massively when it comes to spraying anything. So yeah, massively advised, heat the garage up as much as you possibly can. Okay, so here we are another day later. Now it hasn't got just one coat of paint, now it has two coats of paint on it. It's now completely dry, as you can see, it's now dulled down a little bit before I put the lacquer on. Now the paint went down very, very well, to be honest. I didn't concern myself too much with trying to get the spray pattern right or trying to get a perfect finish. As I say, this isn't a main body panel that can be seen on the outside of the car. I don't need to concern myself too much. I just had fun with it and you know, it really was fun to put down. Is it perfect? No, but you know, that said, is it bad? Certainly not. I'm very, very pleased with the job I've done with it so far. So yeah, I hope you'll agree with me. It's gone down very, very nice. I've, you know, one issue that I have had is trying to get the paint and the primer in all the little tight spots with the aerosol, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. Um, as you can probably see from the previous uh, clips I've just shown you, as I say, I was just getting the paint on. I wasn't concerned myself uh, again with spray pattern. I just got it on and I just enjoyed doing it. So yeah, the next stage is now to put the lacquer down over the top. So yeah, we're getting towards the end of this video. I'm looking forward to the outcome and seeing what the end result's gonna be. So yeah. 
let's carry on. Now what I always do with lacquer before using it is just set it in hot water for five minutes. It just helps stop the lacquer from yellowing, it helps stop the nozzle from spitting everywhere and it just helps the lacquer to bond to your piece as well. Just a little tip. Now personally I find that when spraying lacquer the idea is you don't want to dust it on because it won't give the desired effect, it won't look right, don't be shy, get in there nice and close or close-ish, spray it on, don't be shy, there is a fine line that you want to get close enough to get it on nice and thick but not too thick because obviously you don't want it to run, but yeah don't be shy, get in there fairly close, get it on there. So there you go guys and girls, that is this stage in the engine bay restoration project finally complete. The frame is now looking absolutely spectacular, I hope you'll agree. I think it's turned out fantastically well, if I do say so myself. Personally, I'm absolutely 
chuffed with it i really really am chuffed with it so yeah there you go now just a couple of last little tips when it comes to lacquering guys try not to do the large surface areas that you can see try not to do those first because what may happen is you'll do those first you'll get a nice glossy finish on it but then whilst you're doing all the light the, all the little uh, tight spots and intricate areas the overspray from the lacquer may then settle on your nice glossy bits so yeah do the tight spots first then do all the large areas second or last so yeah another little tip now one other tip is whilst i was doing all the spraying in my garage i tried to ventilate it as much as possible i also had the hose to my hoover coming inside the garage and it was being sucked outside um, it's kind of a two-way hoover that i've got so yeah that's another little tip for you and obviously always wear a mask guys it's really really important so yeah there you go well we've reached the end of the video guys if you have if you are still watching and lasted this long then you know thank you very very much indeed for watching i really do appreciate it when is the next episode gonna come well quite frankly i don't know but i'll try not to make it too long Currently I'm waiting on lots of bits of hardware and fasteners to come back in like you know all the stainless bits and I also need to get a lot of lots of bits uh, zinc plated. So yeah as soon as I start getting stuff back I will release another video so yeah good thing it's come to those who wait right. Quality over quantity as they say well I do say quality I try my best. So as always guys thank you for watching see you next time see you soon.